to another edition of Living Inside Out Ministry. We are looking at the scriptures, the Bible, because we want to know, <clears throat> we're in part three, faith is your servant, but how? We need to know how these principles operate so that when the storms of life come, we are not responding like the disciples did. And we'll get into this in a minute. I just need more faith. Let's look at this. Luke 17, 5 through 9. New American Standard. <clears throat> this is Jesus having a conversation with the disciples. And he was telling them that if your brother sins against you and you rebuke him and he repents, then you must forgive him. Well, they wanted to know when, how many times. See, their mind was not, <laughs> not focused on the right thing. You know, if you approach life, you're believing God for a promise of <clears throat> increased finances. And your first thought is, I wonder how long I'm going to have to wait. Stop right there. Because patience will say, I don't care how long it takes. I'm willing to stand. If you look at and focus on the time element, you just left the realm of faith. <clears throat> so the disciples, well, they were interested. Well, how many times? How many times am I going to have to do this? 70 times 7 in one day. One day. And they thought, oh, no, this isn't doable. So their response to Jesus was, Lord, increase our faith. In other words, we might say today, I just need more faith. So Jesus goes on to answer them, explain to them. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, tiny, tiny little seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. See, that mulberry tree would obey your words because your words contain faith. Mustard seed faith, tiny. Which of you having a slave plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come in from the field, come immediately and sit down to eat? In other words, don't let your faith relax. Come in faith and relax. When we refuse to exercise our faith in small things, we cannot expect our faith to operate when we need it in what we call big things. Doesn't work like that. So don't allow your faith to relax. We said earlier, if you can believe, start by believing God for a dollar. Then increase it. And speak the end result that you want to see. Then when the time comes and a storm comes in your life. You know, Jesus said, when the storms of life come. We are not, as Christians, immune from that. But we have a foundation built on the promises of God, a covenant, and we have our faith as our servant. And we exercise our faith in the small things. And then it becomes, we, we become confident. And so we're not fearful or timid to use our faith for larger things. We're not intimidated by something that comes along that, as the disciple said, oh, that doesn't even look doable. Increase our faith. I just need more faith. No, no. Use what you've got. All of us are dealt the measure of faith. But it is up to us to feed that faith, just like our body, 
if we choose not to feed our body, it'll shrivel up and die. If we choose not to use, exercise our faith, just like a servant, and we choose, just let our faith relax, don't do anything with it, don't exercise it, then it ceases to become a servant of ours. If we want our faith to be our servant, we must send faith-filled words to the circumstance, and then the circumstance, like the mulberry tree, will obey us. We saw the example of God in Genesis doing this himself. The earth was without void. It was unsightly and unfurnished. He did not choose to say what he saw. He chose to say what he wanted to see. And then goes on further, and it was so. We saw the example of on the third day <clears throat> when he spoke to the earth <clears throat> and plants. And they bring forth fruit after their own kind because the seed to bring forth that fruit and the seed for the fruit is in that. It's already there. You plant grass seed, you'll get grass. You have apples, they came from an apple seed. You have the incorruptible seed of God, which you do if you're born again, then you bring forth <clears throat> the life of God. But that is something that we consciously do. Today and every day, just like when the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. <clears throat> it's no different today. They had distractions that they were faced with. We have distractions that we are faced with. And we can look at situations <clears throat> that arise in our life and we can think that's not doable and say, I need more faith. But the truth is, it is doable because the fruit that you want is the fruit that the incorruptible seed in, inside of you will bring forth. But you have to feed your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we exercise and build up our faith by using our faith. You need $2, use your faith to get it. Then when you need $5, you'll have confidence. But if we allow our servant to say, come in, relax, take it easy, take the day off. <clears throat> Do you know the devil does not take a day off? And neither should we. We feed our faith daily. And we don't allow the distractions to become the things that we focus on. And that's what the disciples did. Lord, increase our faith. <coughs> Let's look at something else. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4.13. We're talking about faith is your servant. But how? See, we need to know the how of the principles of the kingdom of God. Because if we don't, and when we need our faith to bring about the result that the Bible says was already purchased for us, we will walk away saying that faith stuff doesn't work. <clears throat> this is in the Aramaic Bible in plain English. Therefore, 2 Corinthians 4.13, <clears throat> Therefore, we also, in whom is that one spirit of faith? As it is written, I have believed, and because of this, I also have spoken. We believe, because of this, we also speak. How <clears throat> do we get? born again. We believe, according to Romans 10, 
8 through 10. We believe in our heart and then we speak with our mouth and we're born again. And there is not a new principle once we get born again and things become complicated and there's some new idea, new way. If somebody comes to you with some sort of new theology other than I believe in my heart and I speak with my mouth and that is how faith operates, run from them. That's not God. You know that's how all these false religions got started? Oftentimes people are seeking some spectacular experience over the supernatural, which many times is a very quiet, unassuming happening. Very quiet, very unassuming. Not a bunch of bells and whistles and noise and clamor. And when I got born again, <clears throat> there wasn't a bunch of hoopla. When you got born again, there probably wasn't either. But nevertheless, you got born again. You got changed. A new creature in Christ. The incorruptible seed began to form inside of you in order to bring forth fruit. The fruit of God. We're created in His image and likeness. Is there any sickness, disease, poverty, lack in Him? No. But we've got to feed our faith with the Word of God. And then we've got to be willing to speak to unsightly, unfurnished circumstances. We've got to speak what we want to see, what the Bible tells us, our life. Jesus came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, if your life looks anything but that, you need to be speaking that scripture and claim that it, that's mine. That belongs to me. He is talking to me. And then you say with your mouth, I have abundant, an abundant life, life more abundantly. I live life more abundantly because I have life more abundantly. Through Jesus Christ, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I've heard it often said, <clears throat> that scripture quoted, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But the scripture says in the original text, I can do all things through Christ, which the Christ, the anointed one, which strengthens me. Well, what is the anointing for? To break the yoke. The yoke of what? The yoke of bondage. When a woman who came to Jesus was bowed over, bent over, she was experiencing a yoke of bondage. Jesus called it bondage. Ought not this woman who is bound by Satan, ought not she be loosed? Why, of course. And that's true for us today. So let's read further. <clears throat> so remember, Genesis, God saw the unsightly, unfurnished mess. But he said something different. And then he saw that it was good. He said, he saw. He said, he saw. He said, he saw, and then said it was good. 2 Corinthians 4.13 we believe because of this, we also speak. Speak. <clears throat> now let's talk about somebody else who operated in this God kind of faith, which is what we get the measure of when we get born again. Not some faith that can't be explained, identified. It's the God kind of faith. Like in Genesis, God said he saw. Same kind of faith. God kind of faith. Let's look at Abraham. Abraham. In the Tanakh. Genesis 17, 1 through 21. 
Now stay with me on this. Don't say, oh, that's a lot of scripture. I think I'll get up and go get something to drink. The word of God is what feeds our spirit. And we become strengthened in our spirit by the word of God. And our best defense is the word of God. And when we hear it spoken out of our own mouth, it nourishes us. It builds us up. It strengthens us in our spirit. So stay with me. And then Abram, Abram, not Abraham, keep that in mind, nine, was 90 years old and nine, he's 99. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, here we go. See, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, said something. I am God Almighty, walk before me. In other words, live your life knowing that I'm present. A lot of times we've gotten fooled into thinking, well, nobody will ever know. Live your life knowing that the Lord is present. Joseph, read about Joseph. Walk before me and be thou wholehearted. I'll tell you, don't be a lukewarm Christian. Be on fire, stay on fire. Don't let the distractions of the world steal the fire of God from in you. Serve him with your whole heart, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on. Be wholehearted. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. He's 99. Now God's starting to say some things that sound like the apostles, not doable. <clears throat> and Abram fell on his face, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> and God talked with him. See, God's talking. Here we go. And he's saying, as for me, <clears throat> behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be the father of a multitude of nations. He's 99 <clears throat> Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. Now he's changing his name to, from Abram. But thy name shall be Abraham. For the father of a multitude of nations have I made thee. Now notice these scriptures before when God's speaking. He said, I will make thee. I will make thee. Then after he changes his name from Abram to Abraham, his language changes. <clears throat> Neither shall thy name be any more called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for the father of a multitude of nations I have made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, fruitful. And I will make, na make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed, seed, after thee throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land of your sojour sojournings. In other words, where he would travel. And all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, Abraham now, not Abram. <clears throat> and as for thee, you, Abraham, you shall keep my covenant, <clears throat> you and your seed after thee throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep. <clears throat> Remember, God said, walk before me with a whole heart. And you shall be circumcised <clears throat> in the flesh 
of your foreskin, and it will be a token of a covenant betwixt me and you. Now notice how God's language changed from I will make you to from Abram to Abraham, which means father of many, and he said, I have made you. And Abraham was 99 years old. Sounds undoable, just like the disciples when Jesus said, forgive your brother 70 times 7 in one day. They said, increase our faith. We need more faith. But it's not undoable if you choose to operate <clears throat> in the God kind of faith. There's a lot said about seed here. <clears throat> he that is born in your house, this is God still speaking, and he that is brought bought with your money, must needs be circumcised. So he's telling them, <clears throat> there's a pattern. And I, anyone who comes into your house, follow this pattern. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And God said to Abraham, now he's going to tell him something about his wife. Her name is Sarai. Thou shalt not call her name Sarai. Going to change her name. But Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her. And moreover, I will give her thee a son of her. Of her. Yes, I will bless her. And she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people <clears throat> shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. Well, I guess so. He's 99. <clears throat> shall a child be born? And said in his heart, said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Now he said this in his heart. And shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Now see, he's thinking in the natural, trying to figure out this. Remember when I said the last time, when you send your faith out with your words of faith, as your servant to bring about the manifestation of what grace has already purchased for you. When you do that, you can expect the results of what God said. But Abraham laughed in his heart and he was trying to figure out just like we do when we say, I wonder how long this is going to take. We leave the realm of faith when we choose to focus on the time element. Faith is a realm that is outside of time. And God said, nay, but Sarah, their wife, your wife, see not Ishmael, shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. Now he didn't leave out Ishmael. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah, see now God, see God operates in this kingdom principle of faith because he doesn't call her Sarai anymore, whom Sarah shall bear unto thee 
at this time set in the next year. No wonder Abraham fell on his face and laughed in his heart, laughed and said some things in his heart because it didn't sound doable. You know, we in the church, we just need to get some crazy faith. We need to operate in this faith that God operates in. When he saw the unfurnished, the unsightly earth and didn't speak out what he saw, but spoke and said instead to that what he wanted to see. That's really all that happens when you ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. You believe in your heart, then you speak with your mouth, and then you are born again. It's so simple, and it sounds too good to be true because religion complicates things. But a relationship with God is simple. Jesus said, take my yoke, for it's simple, it's easy, it's not a burden. Religion wants to complicate things, wants you to have to feel like you earned it. We cannot earn salvation. Impossible. Somebody else purchased it for us, and all we have to do is receive it as a gift, like a child, like a child. So we see here Abraham and Sarah operated in this same kind of faith. And after God changed Abram's name and he was telling him, I will make you, I will make you, I will, I will. After he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, he said, I have made thee. That's how faith operates. Not, I'm going to be healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Though he was rich, he was made poor. So that in his poverty, you might be made rich. Righteousness is a gift. We have no righteousness outside of Jesus Christ. He purchased the gift of righteousness for us. And now when we get born again, we can look at ourselves knowing that God sees us only through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Just like Abram, God said, I will make thee, I will make thee. After he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, he said, I have made thee. I have made thee. Faith calls those things, calls, calls, speak. Where is that? 2 Corinthians 4.13. We believe because of this, we also speak. Do not be a hearer only of the word, but be a doer. So you don't deceive yourself. What you believe in your heart is what you've given your attention to. Give your attention to the word of God. Feed your spirit. Believe in your heart and say with your mouth. Just like our father, we're called to be imitators of him. He said, he saw, and said it was good. He spoke to the unsightly and unfurnished darkness and said something totally different. If you want to be born again, friend, all you have to do is believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that Jesus came, died on the cross, was raised from the dead for you, and ask him to be your Lord. And you will be a new creature in Christ. You will, in the twinkling of an eye, move from darkness to light. Music